I Am Not A Serial Killer is a 2016 release psychological horror directed by Billy O'Brien. It stars Max Records as a young guy called John Wayne Cleaver. Early on in the film we find out he's diagnosed as a sociopath. Bit of an outcast kid, you know, he gets bullied by, uh, by some of the others for being a bit strange. His mother is a mortician and she lets him help out in the mortuary, you know, embalming bodies and things like that, which he, you know, he seems to enjoy. <laughs> As the film starts, we see that there's been a murder. The body's had an organ removed. John is fascinated by this. Um, he does have a bit of a, a thing about serial killers. He's intrigued by this, and then more murders happen. There's certain parts missing, either organs or limbs. He's determined to find out what's going on, all the while trying to sort of suppress his own homicidal tendencies. You know, he has a therapist that he, that he talks to. That's the story. It's him trying to figure out who exactly is doing these murders. And his next door neighbour is played by Christopher Lloyd. Initially, he seems like a kindly old gent, but um, he has a little bit of strange behaviour going on as well. So, yeah, again, John is just trying to figure out what is going on in this small Midwestern town. Max Records. That's a, that's a cool name. <laughs> He's from where the wild things are, wasn't he? Uh, that's yes. That's what he was in originally. He hasn't done too much else. Well, he hasn't done anything since this, no, disappointingly. I think he's in every scene of this film, isn't he? He's in pretty much all of it, yeah. And yeah. he's great in it. He actually, I tell you what he reminded me of. If they ever do another Crow movie, I reckon he could play the Crow. Yeah, good shout, yeah, yeah. There's something about him which there was parts of it, to me, reminded me of Brandon Lee in The Crow. Anyway, we're not here to talk about The Crow. So this is our month of Halloween. Uh, so hot, kind of horror-tinged films. And uh, this would be the final one. Uh, and I saw this a couple of years ago, actually, um, and I noticed it was on Amazon Prime. So I thought, oh, well, that'd be quite an interesting one to do. I mean, it's not that old. It's only 2016. We tend to do older films. But I think this is kind of slightly underrated, maybe. Yeah. It's not one that gets spoken about a lot. I mean, it kind of came out the similar time as Dexter. So obviously the serial killer phenomena was kind of growing again. And obviously since then you've had Mindhunter and, and films like that. Uh, well, that was a TV show. I mean, this kind of follows a similar pattern to Dexter in that Dexter was a... Although he was serial killing he was kind of suppressing his his thoughts and emotions and he only killed bad people he only killed bad people exactly so i think this was kind of following a similar similar theme uh i mean i really like this film i think it's really intriguing yeah, yeah. it's it's very i mean it's quite slow actually but I, but slow in a good way it's just kind of you know you just kind of wander through the story with the characters um and i, and I really like how it does it it's based on a book by Dan Wells, which I've not personally read the book, but I think it was quite a, a, a bestseller, or it was a good seller. I think there's a series of books, actually, isn't there? That's right. There's six of them, but I don't think there's any plans to do any, any more. No. I just think it's really kind of a... I mean, it's it's very similar to films I like. So, in fact, the director, Billy O'Brien, talks about uh, River's Edge, which is a film we've covered on the mm. channel. It's definitely like that. And he also mentions Fargo, an, in a, a, an yeah. influence. And, of course, this is filmed in similar kind of that Midwestern, very cold, it's, it's, it's yeah, set yeah. around winter, although Halloween, it kind of, it seems to take place between Halloween and, and Christmas. Um, so it's very cold, it's very, there's lots of snow. I mean, these these places look, I mean, it gets cold here, but wow, these places look, you know, really, really cold. <laughs> um, so it's definitely got that feel of Fargo and a film like Rivers Edge, this kind of small town America where it kind of, you kind of feel like you're kind of stuck in time a little bit. There's not really anything going and, and you, you you feel like you're miles from anywhere, literally miles from anywhere else. And you know, those smartphones are featured, but without that, you would you would just think it was filmed in the nineties or something. It has that feel, yeah, nineties or eighties or something like that. It definitely has that that feel to it. And and even some of what's being shot. I mean, there's the kind of the classic. You know, he is this teenager and he rides his BMX, which of course is you know, I mean, that's that's kind of E.T. and Stranger Things and even the film Gummo. I mean, there's, there's scenes of kids riding bikes in that. And there's that kind of very, that feeling that you get in a lot of these kind of coming of age type American films. Nothing to do but ride your BMX around the, the streets. Um, so there's a lot of that in there. But it's got some really kind of strong central characters in this film, I think. I mean, no less Christopher Lloyd. I mean, you know, what a great... It's a really great performance by him in this film. And, uh, I mean, there are there are flaws in this film, I think. I mean, what did you think? Because you hadn't seen it before, had you? No, I hadn't seen it. I mean, it, yeah, I bought it on Blu-ray a while ago. And, I, you know, because I'd heard good things about it, I hadn't got around to watching it yet. Um, but, no, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I just... I love the look of it. 
you know it's filmed on 16 mil so it's really grainy you know it's framed in one 1.66 so it's got the you know narrow bars down the side which always gives films a certain kind of feel to them the performances you know again max records is is, is great in it as is christopher lloyd it really pulled me in and i yeah i really enjoyed it just the sort it just had a sort of i mean obviously it is a low budget film but it had the sort of real lo-fi feel to it which i really yeah i really enjoyed and like i said there's there's a few flaws well, not not really flaws but my main i mean when i first watched it i was kind of kind of really in it the whole time and i you know i was really kind of going along going along with the story but this time obviously because i've seen it once before i kind of looking at it in a different way and i have to say this time round i wasn't at, i wasn't as convinced this time round with him being this kind of sociopathic serial killer because he's actually quite a very he's quite a warm character and it, quite a lot of the times he's te- uh, he's often telling like his mum or his therapist that he's kind of you know has no emotion he doesn't care about anyone but actually he's quite warm and he, he does care about people um but I think he's clearly a lost teenager you know his, his parents are divorced and there's a bit of an odd relationship with his mum anyway uh, and, and there were bullies at school and so there are kind of I suppose there's there's bits there but he's not really that you know if you look at a serial killer like Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Bundy, you know, these are kind of almost narcissistical characters or, yeah. or people, and he's not that. No, he's not that, no. But then he is kind of lost, I suppose, um, and he's interested in, you know, horror and, and, and I suppose rock music and things like that. I mean, which a lot of teen, that kind of teenage angst is in there. He definitely has, you know, an unhealthy obsession with, with serial killers, which his detective work, shall we say, trying to find, you know, who's committing these murders is not necessarily coming from a place of concern for his fellow citizens. Right. It's more a fascination with with the person committing them and why they're taking body parts and what they're doing with them and things like that. It's not, yeah, it's not really out of concern for people being murdered. There's a girl who clearly quite likes him and often tries to strike up conversations with him but he just it completely passes it. But he just doesn't know. He does. He doesn't have the ability to to sense that, and it just completely passes him by that she's showing any interest in him. Yeah. Uh, and there's a great scene at a party where you know the bully that keeps picking on him, you know, says, "Oh, this party's for normal people. You know, why don't you go go home to your slut mother?" And we've already heard earlier in the film, you know, he's talking to his therapist, and basically his sort of defense mechanism is to say something nice. To people when they are horrible to him so he doesn't want to kill them <laughs> so he has this great monologue about how this guy means nothing to him he, you know he's just an object like a box and he said uh, he says the boxes are quite boring but when you op- cut them open there can be really interesting things inside so while you're saying all these things to me I'm just imagining what's inside <laughs> what's inside <laughs> you if I cut you open and then says his address to him as if he's like a sort of uh, passive aggressive threat that I know where you live, um, so I might come and cut you open if I get bored. <laughs> so it's just it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I think that's what really it really has going for it. I mean, is you are with him the whole time and you are following him around, watching people and watching things happening. There is this kind of there are these murders taking place in the town, so he spends a lot of time watching. Kind of voyeuristically, I suppose. I think his performance is so watch. He is so watchable in it, and you want to follow him along. And you want to follow his, his story. And there is the the dialogue's great. There's got some great dialogue, and there's a lot. I mean, there is a lot of talk in here about life and death, about mortality, um, and that's clearly a central theme running through the whole film. There's also there's a great scene with Christopher Lloyd where Christopher Lloyd reads he's sitting in his house with a fire going in the background and he reads the poems by William Blake uh, the lamb and the tiger and he kind of explains about those two poems and I think he a lot of his poems were kind of that struggle of humanity and and death and and heaven and hell and things like that and when Christopher Lloyd reads those I mean Christopher Lloyd is an amazing actor anyway it's quite it sends chills up your spine that scene I, I found it's very quite chilling um, and he reads them perfectly, and I mean he's clearly a, a, a first-class actor, you know. I think that's what's really got going for this film is there were some great dialogue pieces, and just some great kind of acting scenes. I mean the stuff between Max Records and Christopher Lloyd is is extremely watchable. You know, I don't want to compare films to other films, but that obviously is 
you, you do that while watching things anyway, because if you love cinema, you think of other films it reminds you of. And I don't think it's bad to compare. And it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a way you can say to someone, well, if you know this film, check out this yeah. film. And I, I think River's Edge, certainly, because the director does talk about it. I also thought, I mean, Donnie Darko is another one. It's kind of, you know, that, that kind of central role by Donnie Darko is certainly here in this one as well. Um, maybe it's not fleshed out quite like Donnie Darko, but they're different films. And also Martin is another one I was thinking of, which I think I've mentioned before. Have you seen Martin? Or the Romero. The Romero one. Oh, no, yeah. I haven't, no. Oh, that's a great film, uh, this one. So I think if you like those three films, then you'll definitely would like this one. Possibly Gummo is not quite as weird as Gummo, though. That that quite is quite twisted, that film. But um, I think, you know, yeah, if you like those kind of films and any kind of coming of age films, then then I would, and you don't know this one, I'd, I'd definitely go and look, search it out. It's quite odd because it's actually, I mean, it's directed by an Irish um, director, Brilly O'Brien is Irish, and the writer Christopher Hyde is, is British. Um, and so it's quite it's quite odd that they've kind of come on board to, to make this film out in America. But I suppose that too gives it a kind of an odd sensibility as well because they're kind of fish out of water in a way no I think it's really great and I think it looks great like you said and the cinematographer Robbie Ryan uh, he's also Irish he made he's made films with Ken Loach and he did things like Fish Tank and American Honey and The Favourite and he's done lots of quite you know standout films and I think he's clearly got you know his eye in this is is is, a, is amazing and it's yeah, really atmospheric at times. Mm. Very dark, obviously, a lot of it's set at night. With some quite strange things going on in the distance. It's kind of one of those films I feel like you need to watch again just to just to kind of look at everything that's going on in the background and uh, and on screen. And, yeah, no, I think it's yeah really interesting film. There is elements to it which we haven't sort of covered. Uh, and I think I went in not realising that, that these were in the film. I don't know how to say it without spoiling it. Anyway... There's some effects in there, shall we say. Toby Froud was responsible for some of them. And and little factoid there, he was the baby in Labyrinth because his father, Brian Froud, did a lot of the design for the creatures. So he was the little little baby, called Toby, interestingly enough, in Labyrinth. I love that fact because when I was watching uh, some of the special features on the Blu-ray, which we'll talk about in a second, yep. I mean, there's not a huge amount on, on the Blu-ray, that name popped up and I was like... Why do, why does that name is that name familiar to me? Because and then you you're right, Brian Froud, yes, of course. He reminds you of the babe. Exactly. The babe with the power. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but here is the Blu-ray. Yes. Uh, which you have as well. I have as well, yeah. Amazing. It's I love the cover actually. It's got quite mm, a that's cool, really cool, yeah. There's not yeah, there's a few special features, there's some deleted scenes on here and a couple of they they made a test film back in 2011 with Max Records when he was younger. Um, which I think led to them getting the funding, but it took them quite a few years to, to get the funding. But uh, this is, you know, this is readily available all over, you know, wherever you buy your Blu-rays from, you can pick this up. But it is on Amazon Prime at the moment. Uh, for yeah, free. you can watch it on there and then, yeah, pick up the Blu-ray if you really enjoy it. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the extras take you about sort of 10, 15 minutes to get through. There's not, not a huge amount on there. I mean, there's it was released in the US as well by, um, by Shout Factory, and there's, I think there's, I think they've got more deleted scenes for some reason. I don't know why we didn't get them all, but they've got more. There's some more storyboards as well, I think. Mostly the same. What I would say, actually, you know, I mentioned it was fil it's filmed in 166 ratio. That disc is 178, so like full, you know, if you fills the whole screen of your TV. I'm assuming that 166 is the original ratio. Yeah, you don't get that on the on the shout disc for some reason. So whether it's, you know, you're actually getting more picture, whether it's cropped at the top and bottom to, to make it that shape, I don't know. Like I said, it's it does seem to be a more popular ratio at the moment, particularly for certain kinds of films. I think The Witch used it as well. And again, that's set in a certain time period. It kind of fit that film. Um, so it's, it, I've seen it used you know, a few times recently um, and it kind of worked because like I said it's sort of a lo-fi kind of film it kind of that slightly odd ratio kind of worked for it I felt um, so whether I would have felt the same if it, if it just filled the whole screen I don't I probably wouldn't have wouldn't have thought of it but, um, but I think it the 166 definitely suits it ratio nerd that I am <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not such. An, I mean, I, I know. I certainly, I certainly know what you mean, and, and I certainly feel that, and probably almost subconsciously, I feel that uh, while while you're watching it, um, and it mm. certainly, yes, I think it, it it lends itself to to a film like this, especially in its kind of tone and, and atmosphere and, and low budget 
quality and, and feeling to it. I, if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend giving it, giving it a watch, especially if you like films like Donnie Darko and River's Edge, maybe, and, and Martin and, and any other films. I mean, kind of, you know, strange kind of psychological horror mixed with coming of age, things like that. Yeah, so, well, that's the end of our Halloween month. And uh, next week, we'll, we'll go back to regular programming. So <laughs> I suppose all there is to say is happy Halloween. Are you doing yes. anything for Halloween? My daughter's got a, a party to go to, so I'll just be ferrying her around. Great. I'm, a, I'm actually off to see the original Halloween in the cinema. Oh, there you go. Socially distanced, I might add, which I'm excited about because I've not Enjoy seen it. Enjoy it. Yeah, hopefully. I've never seen it in the cinema before, and it's a, great, it's a great film. So that was I Am Not A Serial Killer. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button up there, and don't forget to push the bell for notifications. There's other videos to check out over here. Come and find us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and join us again next week for another video.